Good morning. Good morning. November 3rd, we made it to election day of 2020. <laughs> I know a lot of you out there might be feeling a little anxious today, so I thought today would be a great day to talk about anxiety and some natural options, just to remind you that things will be okay no matter what, but there's a lot of strange energy going around today, right? Can you guys hear Piggy snoring in the background? Full on saw on logs, my French bulldog. So sorry about that. Good morning. Good morning. I see you guys all joining. I'm going to give you a minute. Um, I am Dr. Trisha Pingle. This is your morning checkup. And as I mentioned yesterday, here in Arizona, we do not observe daylight savings time. So some of you may think I'm on a little bit early, uh, but this is the new time uh, because uh, we didn't change. <laughs> all of you changed, uh, but Arizona does not change. So good morning. Good morning, good morning. So we're gonna talk a little bit about anxiety today and hopefully you can keep your anxiety at bay. Today, I think most people are feeling a little anxious today. No matter where you fall on the spectrum, politically or otherwise, I think everybody's energy is buzzing. Am I right? So I wanna talk about um, taking care of yourself, taking care of your mind, taking care of your body, being positive, uh, giving positivity to other people. I think this is a day that needs it probably more than many other days. Good morning, good morning. Hello. So today we are all going to slay all day. <laughs> this is the mug my husband picked for me this morning. I think it's fitting because I'm just going to get through today. That's what I'm going to do. And I'm not going to worry so much about everything. I think we worry too much as a society and sometimes we just have to trust. Um, uh, and any of you out there who have um, experienced anxiety, know that it's scary, okay? And anxiety doesn't have to be a generalized anxiety disorder. It could just be when things get busy, they get a little bit crazier, right? We feel it. We feel it um, in our bodies and we have to do something to calm that down. So we're going to, this this talk today will apply to those of you that have anxiety regularly, but also those that maybe usually don't. And for some reason, with everything going on, you're feeling a little bit this week, right? Um, but it does. It makes you feel like you're out of control. It can affect you physically, mentally, spiritually, which is where I think it really does the most harm is when it starts to impact your outlook, your outlook on life, and you start to anticipate more anxiety impacts. I think that's, that's where anxiety really takes a hold of you and can really cause detriment to your health long term. Um, you know, it doesn't even have to be full panic attacks or full blown anxiety, just that energy, that missed energy can kind of mess with your health quite a bit. So <clears throat> here's just something to consider when it comes to, to anxiety, okay? What if we looked at it differently? What if we looked at it as your body communicating with you that there is too much stress going into it, as opposed to looking at it as 100% always a health condition that needs to be treated. What if we just kind of flipped it and said, okay, my body is trying to tell me something. My body is trying to warn me that I might be pushing things a little too far. What can I do about it? Let's focus in on it. Let's refocus. Let's remove external factors for a bit and just kind of hone in on it. And I think um, if you start looking at anxiety as a signal, as your body talking to you, it can help you get a hold of it a little bit faster, particularly in instances where it comes and goes you know, due to life events. Um, you know, of course there are medications for anxiety and we're going to talk about those briefly. And I'm going to talk more about some of the natural things you can do nutritionally, herbally, uh, mind body, um, just to kind of help you calm down a little bit today. And hopefully you'll walk away today, not worrying so much <laughs> deal. Uh, you're welcome. All right. So I think it's safe to say that we're all pretty stressed out and a little anxious this year, right? I mean, if we had anxiety and stress before, I think it's been, you know, compounded in 2020. It has been a heck of a year so far. And the good news is it's almost over and let's hope that 2021 brings a little bit more positivity. But um, 
and health. You know, I think all of us have had our lives uprooted. Um, we've all had to change the way we go about things, the way that we look at things. Um, we've had to, I, I know in my personal world, I see people having to not say things because they're worried about what other people are going to think. I think we've, we've hit a year where it's like you're kind of tiptoeing around every single moment of the day. And unfortunately, on the health side of that, that's a problem, uh, right? Because it causes health detriment if you're holding in you know, all sorts of pent up anxiety. Um, you know, our, our nervous system really takes a hit. And I think we spend more and more time in that fight or flight mode instead of the rest and digest mode. And ultimately, that's going to cause more problems, right? I think I lost some of you on Instagram. Did I scare you off? You know, we've talked a lot about that bear, that bear in the woods in regards to anxiety, right? You're in the woods, you see a bear, you kind of freak out, you panic, right? Now think about that. That bear is a trigger. It triggers that response, right? So I think part of the um, importance of recognizing, and, and when I talked about in the beginning how it's an important trigger, it's to recognize, wait a minute, what bear? is making me kind of flip out and what can I do about it? It's a systematic approach, right? Yes, we can hit you over the head with Xanax or Ativan or, you know, we can, we can put some blinders on with Lexapro or Prozac and sometimes we have to do that, but ultimately you've got to figure out what is that bear? Is it an external stress? Is it an internal stress? And what can we do about it, you know? And how can we solve it so that long term we can get better control of how we react to that bear? And that's all anxiety is, right? It's a response, it's a neurological response to a trigger of some sort. And um, it's not easy sometimes to figure out what that trigger is because often it's compounded. Often it's a bunch of different things, um, all leading to the same thing. We've talked uh, before about external and internal stress and how they cause each other. So for example, for those of you that are new here, right? If we have an external stress, uh, like for example, when my mom died, right, that caused an external stress for me that caused grief, that caused pain, that caused worry, loss, right? By letting that get a hold of me, it depleted my B vitamins, it depleted my vitamin C, it depleted my magnesium in my body because I was using those resources to deal with the stress. Well, now those depletions in vitamins are now internal stress right? So that's more stress. That's another bear. When you deal with stress, your appetite changes, you know, your blood sugar changes. If you let that go for too long, it can cause blood sugar changes, which is another internal stress. An external stress can cause you to run from a bear and raise your blood pressure, right? Let's say your blood pressure goes up. There's another internal stress, right? So what happens is the external and the internal start blending together. So sometimes by the time you get to the doctor and by the time you're able to sit down and say, look, I'm feeling pretty anxious. There's a lot of factors to consider. And if they're not considered, ultimately you can't heal it completely. You can only heal the symptom. Make sense? I'll come back to the questions at the end, okay guys? All right? So sometimes the worst thing about anxiety is not knowing why it's happening if you cannot pinpoint that trigger. That's probably the scariest thing, right? Now, I think a lot of us can pinpoint our triggers this year, which is a good thing. <laughs> we can say, well, we lost our job. Well, it was uprooted. Well, our kids are home. Well, we're not sure what's gonna happen with the election. Well, our livelihood was impacted. You know, you look at, I think a lot of us can, can pinpoint the triggers, the external triggers this year, which actually is an opportunity to find inner health uh, because we actually can pinpoint triggers. I, for so many years, people are like, I don't understand why I'm stressed out. I have a great life, this and that. I think this year we've kind of compounded that. We've allowed us to kind of take a lot of more self-reflection, a lot more health reflection. I think that COVID has done that for a lot of people. I think it has caused people to really think about their health, their home, uh, be grateful for what they have. Um, recognize where they could improve. I think there's a lot of um, self-reflection going on. And I think that's a positive, don't you? 
I think it's a positive. I've seen a positive in my patient database in a sense in that respect. And sometimes it's a little anxious anxiety at first because you know they're like, oh my gosh, and it kind of wigs them out a little bit. And then when they can kind of sit back and say, okay, okay, here's what we have to learn from this situation, I'm seeing them get a hold of that anxiety and move forward. And I think learning from the situation is something we're gonna all need to do. No matter where you fall, no matter what you think, no matter what your beliefs are this time about everything going on, we have to all just come to peace and move forward, right? So obviously, when someone comes to me with anxiety, there's a couple things as a naturopathic physician that I always consider, okay? And this is something to consider in yourself as well. Number one, where is this anxiety coming from? Can I figure it out? It, it, you know, is the body under stress? If so, what kind of stress do I have? I mean, what if all of you sat down and wrote down external and internal and wrote down the external stress in your life and wrote down the internal stress in your life today? You know, once again, internal stress. Do I have high blood pressure? Do I have blood sugar changes? Do I have an underlying medical condition? Am I on any medications, right? Those types of things. External, what's going on around me? And really took assessment on, hey, could stress be causing some of these symptoms? And how do I address it, right? I think sometimes taking a good overview, just whenever you're triggered by anxiety, just taking a moment to say, you know what? I need to take a check on my life. What is going on, <laughs> right? So where is the body coming from? Is the body under stress? Where is, where is the stress coming from? And then also having your doctor help you look for any underlying pathology. Now, what would that be? You know, um, you know, thyroid conditions, hormonal shifts, metabolic disorders, you know, poor bacteria flora. Um, keep in mind that bacterial flora messes with our neurotransmitters, right? So looking at that, you know, are there problems in the heart? Are there neurotransmitter imbalances? You know, you're looking for things like that with anxiety as well. But more so, I think what we forget to look at is the impact of stress on the body and whether we're having internal and external stress associated with that. You guys agree? Now, once you've identified that, you need the tools to make it better. Now, I find a lot of the times the tools lie in vitamins, minerals, proteins, mind-body exercises, lack of breathing, you know, these things that we actually have very good control over, right? We're, we can totally control what we eat. We can control what we allow in, right? We can shut off Facebook. Sorry, Facebook. <laughs> Don't shut me off. I'm <laughs> just kidding. But we can shut it off, you know? We can turn off our phone. We can walk away from those types of stresses, right? But we have to actually choose to do that. So a lot of the things with anxiety are actually well within our control. Um, and sometimes when it gets to that point, I'm not discounting how bad it can get because I know that once that anxiety starts to change your body physiologically, it's a lot harder to get a control of that, okay? And it can feel hopeless and you can feel like there's no way you can pull out of it. But the thing is, is you can. It may take a little bit more time because you've got to replenish all those losses, all those internal stresses, but you will get there. You know, these are all different gradations of anxiety. You've got the person that just gets anxious every so often with little things, and then you've got the person who's anxious from the moment they wake up till the moment they go to sleep, if they even go to sleep. So you've got all these variations, but the bottom line is they all have the same underlying um, physiology. They're all triggers of the fight or flight system. So you have to look at why that's happening and then come up with a systematic plan. How am I gonna replenish this? And then have a little optimism. You will, right? You just gotta find it and you gotta keep moving. So I wanna to talk to you about some of the things to consider with your doctor and um, as you kind of work through these processes. Yeah? You guys cool with this topic? Too much today? I thought, well, it's election day. What should we talk about? First thing that popped into my head was anxiety. Because <laughs> I figured everyone's gonna be all over the place today. So maybe too anxious to even absorb this topic today. I don't know. <laughs> I promise you it's ending on a very positive note here. So, um, you know, um, one of the other concerns I have with anxiety is how quick benzodiazepines are prescribed for it. Now, I'm not saying that I haven't used them on patients with severe anxiety. I'm not saying that they can't help in certain instances, but how fast they're prescribed before the investigation of why it's happening is a problem because they can be addictive. And, you know, if I have a patient who's working very hard on the nutritional and lifestyle factors and they need to use a benzodiazepine every so often to kind of snap them back into alignment, 
you know, to be like, okay, get back to your breathing, get back to your yoga. That's one thing. But when you're trying to, um, you know, control the symptom with that only, it can become a problem, right? So let's talk about some of the natural remedies um, that I've seen success with for anxiety and some of the other things to consider, okay? I got a lot of comments over there. I promise I'll come back to them at the end. Deal? Deal, deal, deal. Finding the root cause is unique to each and every one of you. I guarantee you that no two of you out there have exactly the same root cause to your anxiety, okay? We're all different. So, finding it is key. It's key to optimal treatment. It's key to getting through this. You have to figure out where that trigger is. Where's that, I don't like to call it a weakness because like I said, I think it's a, I think it's a way for our body to communicate with us and if you're really open to listening to your body, you can actually find it very quickly, but it is kind of a weakness. It's like, where's that weak point? Why isn't my body responding to this appropriately, right? Um, but once you find that underlying cause, that's when you pick the treatment. So a lot of you ask me, hey, um, you know, does valerian work for anxiety? Well, it does if you need to access GABA, right? You know, oh, well, does um, L-theanine work? Yes, in certain instances. Like, the treatment has to be modified to the situation. If you know that your trigger is scrolling through Facebook, I could give you GABA all day long. It's not going to do anything until you stop scrolling through Facebook, right? I mean, you got to find the trigger, right? Find the trigger. You've got to have lifestyle management of the trigger while you um, address the physiological output of that. Understood? Okay. Often in my line of work, this comes down to regulating cortisol levels making sure that cortisol is being released at the appropriate time, at the right time, and then dropping at the right time so you can get restorative sleep. Because as we've talked about, if you're not sleeping, you're not repairing. And if you're not repairing, guess what guys? Huge internal stress, okay? If you're not sleeping, your body is under stress. Bottom line, I haven't found anybody who doesn't sleep that isn't impacted somehow by cortisol, okay? So there is absolutely a reason, your body is off kilter. So this is where a lot of the herbs and the nutrients that I'm gonna talk about come into play because you have to regulate that cortisol response, okay? Finding the trigger is also very important because you have the ability to remove the trigger, right? And a lot of you may argue and say, nope, sorry, I'm diabetic, I can't remove that trigger. Yes, you can, you can. Might take more time though. Right? And a huge change of lifestyle, right? Um, all right. I don't want to go into a ton of this. I have a huge article on this. I mean, I could talk about this for like two hours. So I'm trying to, trying to pinpoint for you guys so you can get to it right away. So um, first of all, I wanted to say, because I do want to talk about herbs. I'm going to talk about herbs. I'm going to talk about some nutritional therapies, acupuncture, and some essential oils. But I don't think I could talk about anxiety without just mentioning breathing exercises and the importance of breathing exercises, particularly when you have a trigger. So if you've identified your trigger, um, let's say you're scared of dogs, and I show you Piggy, who's sleeping back here snoring like, like a sailor. Um, and I show you piggy and you trigger, right? There needs to be a way to calm that body down. And that is where breathing can really, really come in handy. Sounds crazy, breathing, that should be something we do already, right? But hey, we don't. First thing to assess when you find yourself in anxious, stop for a second and pay attention. Are you breathing? Usually the answer is no, okay? There are a couple different breathing techniques. We've talked about these in another live, but the four, seven, eight breathing technique is a great one um, where you sit, you put the tongue of your, or the tip of your tongue behind your teeth, right here, right? Um, when you exhale completely, you're making a sound, <sighs> whoosh, like a whoosh sound. And then you close your mouth, you breathe in for a count of four, you hold your breath for a count of seven, and then you breathe out with your tongue at the roof of your mouth making a sound for a count of eight, okay? Four, seven, eight, right? You do that about three or four times. That can calm you down in that moment very quickly. So that is a tool you can start implementing. That's the first step. Ultimately, you wanna to try to learn to breathe all the time, but we don't, right? We don't, because when you're running from a bear, you're not thinking about breath, you're just plain running, 
right? And you get out of breath when you get there. There's also alternate nostril breathing where you breathe in one side, breathe out the other. If you guys haven't read about that, that's a good one. I do have these on my website. Um, diaphragmatic breathing, just making sure that you're actually breathing with your diaphragm. So when I get busy, like when I'm talking to you guys and I get all excited and I'm doing my thing, I find myself not breathing. It's kind of a natural instinct, right? When I have to be on point, when I have to talk to patients, when I have to talk to you guys, it is kind of a sympathetic fight or flight. I don't feel fearful, I don't feel scared, but I've gotta be on point, I've gotta be alert, right? And that's where the sympathetic nervous system is helpful right? But if you've overstimulated it, there's too much stimulation to it, it causes health detriment. Uh, when I'm done with these little speeches, I sit down and I breathe, right? Okay. Another thing, yoga there, I'll give you one yoga move that you could definitely try, uh, that I like it's the legs on the wall move where you literally, you know, lay on the floor and put your legs on the wall. <laughs> Do that for a while. Take some deep breaths that can help calm you down as well. Okay. Now in general, outside of, you know, a diet modification, you know, making sure that you're getting a healthy diet, healthy exercise, breathing exercises, there are some herbal remedies that are really, really helpful for anxiety. Some work for some, some work for others, right? Okay. It's never, there's never one solution for everyone. Here's my top ones. Valerian. I love Valerian. Valerian works similar to what a benzodiazepine would do in that it allows GABA to increase so that the body can bind GABA and calm the body down. It can make you sleepy. So this is something that I use typically in the end of the day when people need to go to bed. Now then you've got Passiflora. Passiflora is very much for worry, okay? People that worry a lot, people that wake up in the middle of the night worrying, people that worry throughout the day. Passiflora can be incredibly helpful. A lot of people do not get tired with Passiflora, which is helpful. Some do. <laughs> so um, it kind of depends on how you respond to it, whether you can use it during the day, but it works very well as an anti-anxiety an anti herb while you're figuring out what the lifestyle factors are that you need to change or where the cause is. I use lavender quite a lot. Lavender also helps with um, um, anxiety. Um, it, it does the hello. It does the same thing as similar to uh, also a, a mild Xanax per se. Uh, lavender is also very beautiful and uplifting. It can be great in an essential oil as well. And I think anything that brings positivity and an uplifting mood is always a positive thing. Sometimes the things that happen, um, we spend a lot of time worrying about how negative they are, but really they're an open door to something else. Is valerian harsh on the liver? Um, uh, not particularly. Now, if you have liver disease, you should definitely talk to your doctor. Um, certainly not as harsh as the medications that are being used. Okay. Now, often I'll use these um, these herbal tinctures, you know, valerian, kava kava, lavender, passiflora, and I'll combine them with adrenal herbs. Why? because it's those adrenal glands that decide whether you're gonna run from a bear or not. They're the ones that are gonna decide whether or not you are going to have a reaction to stress. You're welcome, Linda. Um, so rhodiola, shishandra, those are two herbs I love. I have done lives on those, I will do more. You will see them in um, some of my supplements, like total stress support. You'll see those types of herbs for that reason. And I'm gonna come back to this because this is a great blend because it contains more than just herbs. It also has amino acids, which I'm gonna move into in just a second. Um, the goal is to bring that stress response down. So when you see the bear, you can actually come up with an, a plan to get away from it. So you can outsmart the bear. You know, so often we knee jerk reaction. And if you find yourself knee jerking reaction to anything, you probably have stress on your body, okay? Um, I use the example, um, and this doesn't happen so much anymore, but when my kids were younger, like let's say they left the peanut butter out on the counter and I would just flip out. Oh gosh darn it, why can't somebody, do? you know. <laughs> it's stupid, it's peanut butter for God's sakes. You know what I mean? Um, but you just have this knee jerk reaction. Or you hear somebody say something, or you see somebody do kind of an inflammatory post on your social media and immediately you freak out. That's a sign. You're running from the bear without a plan. Stop, take a breath, take these herbs, come up with a plan, okay? So let's talk about some of the nutrients that are involved in anxiety because these are things you can implement right now, 
okay? Um, and this comes down to a lot of where my supplement line was formulated around because uh, I think a lot of the times what people don't recognize is if you've been under chronic stress, whether that's external or internal, you're actually depleting, um, <clears throat> you're actually depleting nutrients, okay? So you're depleting your vitamin C, you're depleting your B vitamins, you're bogging down your liver, you're depleting your magnesium, and that leads to further internal stress, which causes more anxiety, if that makes sense. Okay, so <clears throat> magnesium is a huge one, um, especially if you are finding a lot of restless legs, muscle cramps, headaches, uh, insomnia, you know, just general tightness in the neck, things like that, look to magnesium. You might need to increase your magnesium. I have an article on magnesium at drpingle.com that talks about the right form of magnesium to take and how to take it. Not all magnesium is created equal, so check that article. Same goes with vitamin C. Check the article at drpingle.com on vitamin C as well. Vitamin C is essential to run from a bear. The other thing that's essential to run from a bear are B vitamins. Now, B vitamins come back into this anxiety cycle. Okay, because what manages the neurotransmitter portion of anxiety and depression? Serotonin, dopamine, epinephrine, norepinephrine, right? All of these have to do with B vitamins and actively methylated B vitamins, okay? So the more stress you're under, the less B vitamins you have available. Bottom line, the less B vitamins you have available, guess what? The more impacted serotonin, dopamine, and GABA will be. Okay, amino acids, and this is where I'm coming back to total stress support. So there are some amino acids that are the backbones for calming neurotransmitters. Often, if you've been overstimulated, right, the reason you would need a Xanax or a serotonin reuptake inhibitor is that you're trying to rebalance those neurotransmitters, right? What if you went to the source of that? What if you said, okay, instead of forcing serotonin to stick around, I'm going to give the nutrients needed to make my own serotonin or to make my own GABA, right? Because I recognize that I'm being triggered by something that I'm having some sort of adrenal um, overreaction. And that's where things like L-theanine and phosphatidylserine come in handy. Phosphatidylserine, hello, <laughs> L-theanine. Okay, now L-theanine is a great one. L-theanine is an amino acid, okay? It is found in foods, you do get it. I also recommend taking it if you're under a lot of external, internal, or both types of stress. And it is the basis of this total stress support, which, complain, which contains herbs like bacopa, ashwagandha, rhodiola, ulithero root, but also contains L-theanine and phosphatidylserine, okay? This makes it different than a simple herbal formulation. L-theanine, one, has been shown to help with GABA levels, to bring the GABA levels up, which help you say, okay, bear, I got this, right? It also helps calm the brain by helping with serotonin and dopamine, and it combats the overuse of epinephrine and norepinephrine, okay? So L-theanine can actually not only calm the brain, but it also can improve your attention, your focus, your memory, and your learning. A lot of people ask me this. They say, well, if I take L-theanine, it's calming me down, but I feel so foggy in the morning. And my answer is give it time because once you've calmed that stress response, your body utilizes the cortisol more effectively. And when it does that, you get better concentration, better focus, and better energy, right? So total stress support, good one, okay? Um, if you wanna look for this, you can go to drpingle.com and click on the top link to the supplement store, Total Health Apothecary, or you can just go to totalhealthapothecary.com. But that's the benefit of this, okay? Not only does L-theanine help calm the body and improve your focus, it also enhances your alpha brain waves. So when you sleep, you get more quality sleep. It's not about knocking you over the head like a Xanax or an Ativan would. It's about giving you more quality sleep so that you get better restorative sleep, okay? Um, <clears throat> the supplements, of, I would recommend taking this regularly. Yeah, not as needed. 
I usually say twice a day, one capsule twice a day, once maybe in the midday time and then once in the evening typically. Okay, and I do have that on the full PDF. If you go to the website, Total Health Apothecary, and you look at the description of each supplement, at the bottom there's a link that says read more or get the full product information. And I have product information sheets with research and stuff so you can really look at what these are. But this that's where this is formulated from. That's what makes this different than most adrenal supplements on the market, okay? is that it has that formulation. This was a very well thought out supplement that I take full pride in. I absolutely love this one. Um, but, um, so it will improve your sleep. It can reduce your stress and anxiety even better than some of those medications because it doesn't knock you out. It just calms you down. And therefore it enhances your attention, your focus and your learning. Okay, so very, very important. Um, amino acids are very important. Also, Amino acids, if you do A plus B leads to C, right? If you think of a reaction, A plus B and then an arrow leads to C, the amino acid would be A, right? And then there's another, usually another thing B, and then there's a whole bunch of things over the arrow. Vitamin Bs, vitamin C, very, very, very important, okay? You can take all the L-theanine if you, you want. If you don't have the cofactors to drive that reaction, it's not gonna go anywhere. Actually, it's magnesium, vitamin C, and vitamin B. Um, I do have a B complex. That is why you'll see in some of my bundles, the B complex is included with it because it's so important in driving that reaction, okay? Also, acupuncture. For those of you that have not tried acupuncture for anxiety, sign up for it. It helps them tremendously. I'll even teach you an acupressure point right now. Ready? Okay, so put your fingers at the top of your ears, or put your thumbs at the top of your ears, and then go right to the middle top of the head, right there, and push there's a calming point for you, okay? Feeling stressed out, push there, okay? That is a very calming point. Also, right at the uh, eyebrows, another one. So, feeling stressed out, <laughs> you can even do this. See, make all sorts of faces. We can have fun with the kids. I actually do that with the kids quite a lot. Uh, but using needles is even better, but there are some points that you can use just as a little takeaway from Dr. Pingle today, okay? All right, um, essential oils. Now, many of you, I know on Instagram, are essential, carry essential oils. You have wealth of information here, but bergamot, clary sage, holy basil, lavender, orange, chamomile, rose, sandalwood, lang lang, uh, lavender. These are all essential oils that can be diffused. They can be put on your pillow. They can be put under your nose. You can wear them as perfume um, just to kind of breathe in those oils and calm yourself down. Now you will see a lot of these herbs I've talked about are used in my supplement line. A lot of these nutrients are used in my supplement line because they're all meant to kind of play off each other, right? Minerals, B vitamins, and calming herbs. But Please, this isn't about selling my supplements, okay? I'm just giving you the education to know what they're formulated on because I do think they're important. What I want you to take away from today is you have the power to interpret how you bring information in. And if you're finding yourself overstimulated, you're too worried about things going on socially, what other people are doing, who other people are voting for, what's gonna happen in the future, take this moment to just let it go because it's only going to make it worse. Now, if you've hit that point where it's hit you physiologically and it's causing health problems and you're getting more internal disease from anxiety, that's why I mention this, okay? Because something's gotta help you pull back. If you're at the beginning stages of this, let's say this is just a 2020 phenomenon, you've never really experienced anxiety before and now it's starting to stir, just take this opportunity to let it go. Let it go. The bear is not really there. It's in your imagination. You have control over the bear. But sometimes you have to just stop, take a deep breath and recognize that so that you can get a hold of it and you can come up with a plan. That's my takeaway for today. Don't let today take you down a rabbit hole. Tonight, <laughs> when you're watching the news and whatever, don't let it. And if it does, back away, turn it off. Okay, regardless of what happens, we are all still here to support each other, to love each other, to send joy to each other. We are all a blessing. 
all of us, every single one of us is a blessing right here on our earth and we all have the ability to help somebody else. We all have the ability to be kind. We all have the ability to love. So let's just do that today. That's my takeaway today, okay? For those of you that were so sweet to join on this crazy day, just remember you have the power to spread positivity and love. It is nobody else's fault if somebody's negative. It is nobody else's fault for you to be negative. You have the power to decide how you wanna move forward regardless of what happens today, okay? So be kind, okay? All right, happy Tuesday. Oh wait, I had questions. Okay, I'm done with my little soapbox speech, but I will go back and answer some questions here for all of you that are still hanging out. Um, uh, let's see, let me start over here. Uh, you're welcome, Andrea said, I appreciate this outlook on anxiety. Yeah, remember, it's your body communicating with you, okay? Um, you know your trigger. I think triggers are the memory of something traumatic most of the time for a lot of folks or fear. Fear is huge, Andrea, fear is huge, that's my point. How much of the worry today is based from fear? Fear of what will happen tomorrow? Fear is, in a sense, worthless. Fear is helpful if you're truly in danger um, in that moment. It's not helpful for forward movement. Okay. Now, if fear triggers you, use that to do something positive. Open a door to something. Use it in a positive way. Don't get caught in it, though. Fear is huge, and fear is 2020, right? That's where most of this is coming from, is from fear. You have the ability to modulate that. You don't have to be afraid, right? I think one of the things I learned when um, my family members passed, every time they've passed, is that I can communicate with them. I don't have to be afraid of them not being here. I don't have to be afraid of what I'm gonna be. I just changed the way I looked at it, right? So, uh, acupuncture in Phoenix. There's quite a few um, here in Phoenix, a lot of acupuncturists here in Phoenix. Um, I don't, off the top of my head, I don't have anyone, but uh, we have great acupuncturists here in Phoenix. I think what I would do is I would Google someone close to you, look at their reviews, um, see if you can get some feedback on there, call their office, but yeah, there's some fantastic acupuncturists here. I mean, I can't think of any that my patients have seen that I haven't um, really uh, had good feedback from. There's a lot of naturopaths doing acupuncture as well. I'm board certified in acupuncture. I don't do it that often, so I usually refer out at this point just because I only do the mild, just a few little points, but there's a lot. Um, if you see a naturopath, which there's a ton of us here as well, uh, they probably do it as well, or they definitely have someone, okay? Um, <laughs> Gretchen, I'm sorry to hear about your anxiety. Don't worry about it. It'll be fine. Regardless, it will be fine. H how you take it, what you do with it will determine how it's gonna be, right? Dr. Pingle, are these herbal options as effective when consumed in teas versus supplements? Not always. Some of these herbs are better with alcohol extraction, so when you decoct them in water, they aren't quite as potent. I don't find that valerian teas are anywhere close to as potent as a tincture. Same with passiflora. Now, lavender, um, I've seen a lot of people do great with lavender tea, so it kind of depends on the herb. A lot of them need to be extracted through alcohol, so tinctures are a lot stronger, supplements are a lot stronger because they've been extracted okay um, but I do love teas and they're always a nice routine right thank you Gretchen uh, Richard just started taking total stress response good let me know what you think let me know give it about two weeks twice a day let me know what you think um, you're welcome guys a lot of thank yous over on Facebook I'm very grateful for all of you on Instagram I did have a few comments and then I'm gonna let you guys head out uh, and go about your day um, lots of just uh, confirmations. Thanks, guys. A lot of people saying you really needed this today. I'm glad. Sounds great. Um, I think I answered how to take it. Um, thank you, guys. You're welcome. You're welcome. 
do you have a recommendation? Okay, colon problem, fatty liver. I need to cleanse and detox all this first. I don't know where to start. You know, I have a program, um, a, a 30 day, well, you can do it forever, but it's laid out as a 30 day program. It does come with a free detox week to kind of cleanse the body, clean out the body, and then go into a 30 day program of healthy eating, mind body exercises, how to handle stress, education on all these things that I talk about, that talk about, you know, um, how do you interpret stress? How do you change how you interpret stress? What types of labs should you ask your doctor? for those types of things all of you that keep asking me how do I do this how do I get under control check out my program it I swear it's ridiculously cost-effective you get so much stuff um, totalhealthturnaround.com is the website you can also go to drpingle.com there's ads for it all over the place but if you guys are looking for a way to kind of detox the body reset back away from everything kind of really take a good look at your health and figure out what those triggers are and what's going on my program could be so helpful to you guys I don't know how to say it enough I can't be in everybody's everybody's doctor and I can't be in front of everybody all the time outside of this and so I created a program so that all of you that did not have access to me could actually have access to what I've seen work so well for so many people so if you're one of those people that are asking for help please check it out totalhealthturnaround.com okay um, it really it will help you okay <laughs> Lori, I hear you. Gorgeous day in Florida, Kelly. Yeah, same here in Phoenix. I'm going to go out and, and enjoy it. Uh, do, 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 do. Um, what is your take on chaga mushroom? Love mushrooms. Love chaga mushroom. Love mushrooms for immune support, for nutritional support. Absolutely great. Love it a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the 30-day turnaround. Have a great day. Yes, Kathy, thank you very much. And I wish more would just look at that and give it a con as consideration because it really can give you that jump start that you need to, to start going down this path that I preach every single day. Okay? Wonderful, Linda. I hope to let me know what you think. So anyway, guys, hey, stay positive today. It will be okay. Let's spread joy and love. I will be here tomorrow, same time, uh, despite the um, my little fiasco with daylight savings time, but I'll be here. For those of you that are new here, I'm Dr. Trisha Pingle. All of these topics, a lot of these questions, these herbs are pretty much all pro profiled for free at my website, drpingle.com. So read up. If you have any more questions, be here. This week, we will have another topic Wednesday and Thursday, and then I'll have a QA and a on Friday. So go read up so you can come to me with questions on Friday, okay? Uh, much love to all of you. Have a great day. Um, I'm so grateful for each and every one of you. Take care now. Bye-bye.